Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Solo, solo, solo. Hey, hey, hey. good morning to you guys so this is day four day four at the East Cut last night I slept like a baby except for one certain thing that happened to me for the very first time I was asleep all of a sudden I wake up with tremendous pain my right leg my right leg is is cramped up and I don't know why I, I guess I haven't been drinking enough water it had never happened to me but it was quite painful when you're out here for this long and you've been waking up early in the morning go 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 there's so many things that you have to do from casting a net carrying bait buckets um, the water tanks you know firewood digging holes casting out and yeah even carrying you know big fish you know that weigh a lot guys I e even with all that of uh, you know it, it, it's, it's stuff that's gonna happen is you're overexerting yourself okay you're really pushing your body especially when you're an office guy you know that's always you know leading a sedentary type of lifestyle and uh, then you come out here you do this it's extraneous if you're not used to this type of thing you know you, you just got to prepare for it I want to go I want to go <laughs> it doesn't want to go apparently you know anyway I'm sure you, Rick you had a good time out here had an excellent oh my god is really like once in a lifetime thing what a great way to celebrate my brother's birthday bringing my son out here we did a lot of father and son things he learned a lot, I learned a lot, we all did, and we, and at the same time used what we haven't experienced. It was, it was, oh my God, it was amazing. Shortly after Rick and Jorge left, we got a special visit from our friends, Alan, Alex, and Ron. What's up, guys? Wow. Hey, they didn't waste any time and quickly got their lines in the water. Wow. All right. Alex, looks like you got yourself a little stingray here. Look at that barb, man not good all right day four day four and uh thanks to uh junior my brother here we're not completely skunked oh we don't need that <laughs> anyway what i'm saying is things are looking up that's a nice size uh, whiting he caught and uh that's definite good eating. I don't think people understand just how delicious whiting are. That's good eating fish. Here's that boy. Nice. Hey, disgusting. <laughs> oh. The ladies are present today. About ladyfish here is that it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to catch these things. They give, give a fight. They put up a fight and it makes for some uh, awesome acrobatics.
Ladyfish all day. Another fight though. Oh yeah, man. They love to jump, those ladyfish. There she is. We're working on this beautiful uh, king mackerel. It's 45 inches long. Look, look at it. Bask in its glory. We landed this bad boy yesterday. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you we are very proud of this catch. Uh, today we have Alan, of course, Junior right here, my brother. And Alan is going to be uh, attempting to fillet this mini monster. Uh, and we're probably going to try to have, have a, a little bit of it for dinner tonight. We don't just consume fish or we don't take fish, harvest fish, just for the hell of it. Whatever we take and whatever is it that we keep legally, we will consume it. Okay? So we're not wasting anything. So if this offends you, I'm sorry, but that's not what we're here for, okay? Anyway, Alan, proceed. Walk us through it, man. What are you doing? You're running it through the backbone here? Yes, sir. Try to get as close to the backbone. Have you ever done one this big? Nope. Look at that precision, dude. I'm the one wearing the surgical gloves, but the one that's doing the surgical Man, look at that, how nice. What a beautiful fish, man. What a beautiful fish. Look at that. I hear that these are very oily. Very fish. oily fish. Good eating. Good eating. And tonight, the bit that we're gonna prepare tonight, how are you planning on uh, Blackened? doing it? Blackened? Pan, pan seared. Pan seared. Yes, sir. So guys, I know that normally I'm always promising you guys a T-Bones. That's what we do at Coastal GX. Well, we have to deviate from that, you know. The T-Bones happen because normally uh, I can't fish worth a damn, all right? But this trip has been very, very different, all right? And we landed this one yesterday, Junior? That's right. We landed it yesterday and uh which was uh day three and now of course is day four out here at the east cut and we strategically placed this table as you can see right next to the water so we have this uh, infinite water source that will allow us we have to uh, clean up some of the of the fish uh, maybe if there's any any leftover the leftover parts that we're gonna be dumping back into the water and uh, hopefully crabs and other wildlife, maybe the birds or whatever, will uh, feast on the carcass mm -hmm. or whatever's left over. And guys, what I'm doing is I'm hovering over here around Allen because this is very new to me, okay? But uh, I really do hope that I get to that I get to learn more as we go. Now, what is it that you're doing right there, man? You're trying to get as close as you can to the rib cage? Yes, sir. That's what I see. Try not to get the knife dirty with the guts. Try not to get the knife. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now, look, look at my hand, guys. I want you to see just how much, you know, look at the stakes, look at, look at this. This is incredible, man, incredible. that that's the top right there can we chunk this into the ocean yeah <laughs> that's right guys 45 inches that's how what it measured incredible Look at this beautiful, look, look at him. This beautiful strap right here. Amazing.
anyone watching this, how do you prepare this? How would you prepare it? I already heard there was another gentleman, his name is Robert Capello from McAllen. He was here helping us identify the fish. And he told me, he's like, Rob, what you need to do is you need to cut these into steaks, marinate them overnight in Italian dressing, and then put them in the oven that way. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, Alan already explained to us what he's planning on doing so that we can taste the fish tonight. All right, but uh, we would want to take some of these steaks back home to our family so that they can also enjoy in this feast. And um, look at that. Nice. So whatever recipes you guys have, please comment. Let us know. Okay, brother. Walk me through this shit. So you're doing pretty much the same thing. Running the uh, knife. To the back? To the back, yeah. And then... Guys, this is a 39 and a half inch bull red. 39 and a half inch bull red. My very first red drum ever. And I guarantee you, not an inch of them will be wasted. We harvest the meat, we consume it. This fish was tagged properly. Any other fish that we caught were released. And what a lot of uh, fishermen do is, for the very first time, their very first fish, they tend to keep it. At least that's what I decided to do because I am planning on taking some of this meat over to my family so they can consume it as well. I am very proud of this catch. And I know I can't make everybody happy, but this is a legal catch. And some people might be upset because I kept it. But this is the very one and only that I've ever caught in my life. And I will tell you that I will never keep another one again. I will release them. I will release them. I used my tag. I did everything the right way. And here we are with my friend Alan He's giving me a hand with this. As I can see, this is a lot harder to do than oh yeah, this the king. Would you say it's because of those scales, man? Those scales look tough skin. Uh, freaking tough. Oh yeah. Now, the important thing is to keep it close to the bone. I see there. Mm -hmm. To be able to harvest as much meat as possible. And guys, I did not want to butcher. Why am I not doing this one? I'll be honest with you guys. I don't want to butcher this animal. I I am. Uh, humbled by it. I am extremely humbled by this animal. It's beautiful. And I took it out of his element. So I don't want to let anything go to waste. I'm even going to ask uh, Alan to try and salvage the, the throat if possible. I don't know if that can be done. I hear some of that meat is, is, uh, is uh, not just edible but very delicious. DJ. DJ Universo so 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 <laughs> Looks like a small shark. Hey, look at that. Any identifying marks? Is that a black tip? I think it's a black tip. Yeah, that's a black tip. You can see that. Did it give you much of a fight, Alex? Kinda. Not really, it felt like dead weight. I just got, how I got, I got um, tangled up. You think it, it just got tangled, snagged? It looks like it was snagged. The hook's in there. Well, careful, watch out. Is there a chance of reviving him or? Yeah. 
if, if you're not gonna keep it, you know, it would be nice to, uh, free. yeah, revive them and, and send them back, dude. Grab them from the back of the neck, like that, and then uh, revive them and uh, send them back. Send them in. Yeah, just in and out. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. He's gonna, oh shit, grab him for the tail. Yeah, just grab him for the tail. Wants to retrieve him? Oh, Not anymore. I'll what a day retrieve him, dude. Here, hold my <laughs> beer. No. This is sketchy. And even more important, hold my phone. And keep that light on it. Come on, bitch. we're gonna party over here. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. You see his uh, fins, his yeah. gills? Are they moving? Oh, they're kind of like breathing in and out. Yeah. He needs to recover, dude. Recover, buddy. The shark started to recover after a few minutes in the water. Get up. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Solo, solo, solo. Hey, 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 hey. Do it, do it, do it. You can do it. We're coming to the end of day four, getting ready to go to bed. I am a little tired, but I am still high on the excitement. So this is gonna be the last night at the East Cut. But let me tell you what I found out. So when we got here, it was cold, chilly, winds blowing from the north. We had to adapt to those elements. Now, day four, or night, you know, for day four, uh, we're facing other elements. It's sticky, it's hot, there's no wind blowing. It's just, you know, less than ideal, okay? But uh, if you hear that humming in the background, that's a generator. You know, we're, we have the generator going, and uh, so we have a couple of fans in uh, each one of those tents that you see behind me. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, we have new guests today. We have three other friends of ours uh, that you met earlier in the video, and uh, they're gonna be sleeping in the bigger tent, and my brother and I, we're gonna be sharing uh, uh, the tent over here, the Gazelle T4, a smaller tent. Um, but we're ready to go. We're ready to see what tomorrow brings. Probably gonna spend a little bit of time doing fun stuff and then the daunting task of packing up, making sure everything else fits and uh, make our way safely back home. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you guys, you know, find this interesting. Maybe you can take something away from it. Uh, I don't know, I hope you do. I hope it's a positive thing for you. Um, if not, or if you feel that you wanna make a comment and uh, perhaps give me some advice because I'm always looking for that, things to make things better in the future, please comment. Also, if you enjoy the content, as always, share, subscribe, like, all that good stuff.